Uh, morning, everybody. My name is Martin Kearns. I'm the Agile Practice Lead. And today we're here to uh, talk about one of our Agile experiences. A real project, a real experience. Um, I'm going to introduce you to David Brown. Uh, David uh, came to know about me through uh, his project manager, who hired me without him knowing. So we, we didn't get off to the best start, but I think we've, uh, you'll see that we, we were able to make something work for the project that we had. Uh, what's really important is that this is a, a project, it's not your project. So when we talk, think about your project and consider the elements that you might be able to bring into your project to make a change a little bit different, or the project that you're thinking about in the future. So uh, welcome David, and uh, let's get started. Thank you guys. Um, look, we do get along these days, <laughs> it's all good. Um, what I hope to go through today is, as Martin said, it's, it's a project experience, it's a project within NAB Capital. I do need to say up front, it's not the official process that we've taken. It's been specific to our project, and, and I needed to say that in case there are any other NAB Capital people here. <laughs> Start off, I wanted to just give you a little bit of context about the project itself. So in terms of the project scope, it's a data quality project. It's about process. It's about technology. The reason for putting this up is that technology is probably the smaller part of the project. Where it's all about process improvement. It's all about more data quality for, for NAB Capital. The business impact, it's a global rollout. We're affecting directly more than 10 business units globally. Um, the NAB Capital wide process change, so we basically hit almost every business unit within NAB Capital for the project. From a, pre from a technology perspective, we're having to integrate to 70 plus systems um, and we've got a three year development horizon. So it, it's quite large. It's actually the, uh, in the top three big spend projects for, for NAB Capital. So it's not, it's not a website on the side. Um, it's actually a real thing. It's quite complex and, and a fairly daunting task that, that, we are, that we undertook. So I thought I'd put that in a bit of context and, and I've borrowed this from, from some of Martin's material. Um, to go through a project complexity graph. So on the y-axis, we can talk about the requirements. They're either close to agreement or far from agreement. X-axis, close to certainty or far from certainty in, in relation to technology. In terms of this project, I'd probably rate it about here. My reasons is because we've got lots of SMEs around the world. They know what they do. They do it well. They do it day in but they can't actually describe their requirements. It's very operational in, in, um, in focus. So we don't have a good handle on requirements at all. Contrast that to what the project's doing. We've gone out, we've purchased an off-the-shelf uh, product, um, which brings with it a whole bunch of IP. So we need to map the processes that we get from the, from the off-the-shelf product. We need to try to map that to real requirements, so there's, there's a tension there. And that's the reason why I think on the, on the y-axis, we're far from agreement. From the technology axis, the x-axis, we've got a highly configurable product. We've got more ways than we can think of to, to achieve this, but we need to come to some learning and some consistency. We, not to, we need to bring processes together to unify them. So that's just a little bit of background on the project. Now, when we, when we completed the business case and we, we sat down, we thought, okay, well, what, what's the incumbent approach? It's waterfall. Now, what I'm going to put up here is oversimplistic, but I thought as, a, as an example it's worth just putting up according to sort of the more waterfall heuristics and starting it at the 1st of February, which is when we did start the project. If we took that sort of, that sort of methodology, what we'd be looking at? We'd be looking at winding up requirements around December 08. Uh, analysis had finished probably May 09. Design, October 09. Uh, construction, October 10. Um, and testing February 2011. So we wouldn't beat in a carbon trading scheme, not even the Liberal one, I don't think. So I just don't think that was an achievable. Now, this is not a revenue producing project, so very real risk of being canned because for uh, failure to actually deliver something in any, in any reasonable time. Now, that is oversimplistic. We did break it up into streams, but in reality, when we looked at the waterfall approach, our very first deliverable would not be within the first year of the project. So that's a lot of spend for the bank without any return value. So 
So now I want to spend a little bit of time just on our business case. You know, what actually drove us to, to thinking about an agile approach for the project. Our number one critical success factor, improved time to market. Now, hardly, hardly measurable, quite a motherhood statement, but important, and it's what our business told us, is the number one. If we do anything, we've got to improve the time to market. And, and the time to market in this context is to bring new products for capital markets. Now, so if we reflect back on the waterfall approach, we possibly could do it. We could sound design, sound construction, sound process, hand it over, or be in it, um, in a quite lengthy time. We could, could achieve it. However, we certainly wouldn't be demonstrating that through the development cycle of the project itself. So from my perspective, I thought, well, you know, if we don't practice as part of the implementation, what hope do we have of our BUA, our business as usual people, being able to support this as a process? How, you know, if, if, we don't do, if we don't eat our own Vegemite, what's, you know, how, how are we going to be successful going forward? So we came to the conclusion that waterfall's not it, uh, and we needed to look for an alternative. So at that point in the project, we, we, we gathered troops, sat back, had a look around and thought, well, what are we going to do? Let's think about what actually we want to achieve. And we sat down and we came up with some, some principles. We took a pretty broad horizon beyond the project and came up with, I won't list them all, but the sort of things that we came up with. So we always wanted to keep focus on ensuring that we're ad actually adding value. We wanted to collaborate, but we've got, a lot of, we've got a quite a diverse um, user base. We needed to keep collaborating with those people. And we needed to keep an eye on quality because we are replacing systems. We can't just replace like for like. So where we looked to was iterative development. Now, I won't take the time to go through the whole lot of the things. You know, anyone can Google this. You've got, we've got an agile expert in the room who, who I'm sure you know, can take us through word by word all these benefits. But for us, we, we needed to be sure that we could apply it to our subject domain. Could we deliver in this manner in small increments? And we went out and we talked to other projects. There are lots of other projects which are agile in nature. We wanted to find out how successful they'd been, the sort of quality they'd got out of it, how pervasive the agile had been. You know, did they just do it for the development cycle? Or did they engage their customers? Did they actually deliver to, to the agile methodology as well? 